My name is Mary Ellen, and I was diagnosed with breast cancer in May of 2009. My name is Angel De Jesus. I was diagnosed with cancer many years ago. My name is Sheila, and I was diagnosed with breast cancer in April of 2011. I had other things happening during that period of time too. I had a, a total hysterectomy. The economy was bad, so I lost my uh, medical insurance, and I started working with a company uh, that did not provide the insurance, you know. I found out I had triple negative breast cancer, which is a very aggressive type, and um, I automatically thought, okay, I'm dying. And I kept denying and just didn't go to the doctor, started putting an eye, eye patch over my eye. I had a lumpectomy. And I went through seven rounds of chemo and 33 radiation treatments. As it time went by, it got worse and I got headaches and they did an MRI and they found out that between my sinus and my brain, there was a tumor. I have two girls and um, I'm a single mom. And so my first words to her was, do I need to get somebody to raise my kids? So that was really tough. Shay and I work together as nurses, oncology nurses. We've been together, um, oh gosh, almost seven years. During that seven years, we both listened to the patients and, and, and heard their cries about what was going on. We had some idea that people were going through things, but we didn't have any idea of the magnitude. As our patients became more comfortable with us as they were coming in, they would start sharing from their personal lives. I had to quit my job. My sister started doing fundraisers for me because I had no source of income coming in. Patients getting calls that while they're going through their chemo, um, that they can't pay their utilities, or when they get home, their lights are gonna be shut off. Losing their jobs, or not being able to work because they were sick. They did the surgery. The surgery was um, 10 and a half hours. And um, I was practically dead for seven days. You know, you finally wake up. And when you look in the mirror, you got this in your face. And now I know I can't go back to work. People becoming homeless and the, do you girls know of anybody that can pay the rent for this person? They're gonna get evicted. In the midst of that, I was, you know, losing my apartment little by little. I, w I would get transportation through Medicaid. They drove me everywhere to all my doctors and my Medicaid was going to end. And I didn't know what I would do because I didn't know I couldn't drive. Mm -hmm. I developed a fear of driving. And they're going through chemo and that, your immune system's so weak that you have to have running water and you have to have all your utilities on. You cannot, you cannot go through treatment without that. We got to talking about it and found out in sharing that Diana had been paying out of her pocket to help people and I had been paying out of my pocket to help people. And so we thought, well, you know, if we've been doing it separately, how much more can we do together? The next thing I know, Diana said, well, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. And my eyes got kind of big because, you know, so far it was just talk. Well, all of a sudden it was real. I had a dream in my heart. You know, it came to the point where the patient's cries became so loud and the need just got greater and greater. In March 2011, we became incorporated. By August of that same year, we had our 501c3 in hand. Finally, I uh, was ready to help somebody. We helped our first patient. It was just the first of many. The way I ran across Loving Arms was um, I had to get radiation 43 days every day. That's where Loving Arms came in. Every morning, they pick me up and take me home. 
Diana came up to me, she was my nurse that day, and um, I just started sharing with her because I had tried a lot of different avenues trying to get help, nothing. I, I can't even tell you how many I called, there was no help for me. And I started sharing this with Diana, I had no idea about her and sharing what they did. And she said, well, she, we can give you a gas card and help you with some groceries. I'm like, really? I developed a fear of driving and um, couldn't get behind the wheel. So she said, well, there's an organization, Loving Arms, and they, they could help you. I'll get you their number. In fact, she got on the phone right then and there. And I just kept saying, one day, I got to give back. And then one day I came here and I said, I'm here to help you guys, whatever it is, clean the bathroom. So I just came. At first, I thought I was kidding around. They told me, you're, you're our office manager slash pool boy, so I do whatever they need me to do. I love Diana and Shay. They're wonderful people. And um, I want other people to feel what I have felt working with them and being with them. And uh, it gives me something to do right now. It makes me feel needed, and it, it really is important to me. That's how they came into my life. I tell them every day. <laughs> they tell me, thank you. I say, oh, you thank you, because you gave me back my life. I started sewing and making these towels that had a butterfly on it, and at the bottom it would say, there's life after cancer. We took a hold to that butterfly idea, because just when that caterpillar thought he was dead, it was over he emerged as a beautiful butterfly. And so we relate that to cancer patients. Once they're diagnosed with cancer, they think their life is over. But then they go through this stage where they get the chemotherapy and the radiation, and then on the other side, they emerge stronger and better than they were before they got it.